Over the years of weekend wank shop, I've shown you guys about a million of my favorite super hot alternate picked sequence licks, but I can't help but feel like I've neglected our good buddies, the good old hammer on and pull off. So on today's video, I'm gonna show you guys one of my absolute favorite lightning fast legato sequences in ascending and descending fashion. That way you can get better acquainted with these handy techniques. Licks so good, they'll make your hands say, Domo arigato, Mr. Legato. Well, hey there, kids, it's your good buddy, Uncle Ben. As a young man, one of my first Sherpas up the mountain of shred was the mighty Joe Satriani, and I fell in love with the sound of his liquid smooth legato lines. And as a result of that, playing lines with tons of hammer-ons and pull-offs became one of my go-tos anytime it was time to, you know, throw down and start playing some super fast stuff. But I feel like I haven't shown you guys nearly enough of those patterns that I like to use and abuse on a daily basis. Plus, you guys have been asking me for more legato-based content, so today's sextuplet-based A minor lick goes out to all of you guys, my hammer-on hoes and pull-off pimps. But before we can commence this legendary legato lesson, let's hear those licks again at stepdad speed. As always, downloadable tabs, backing tracks, bonus lessons, and so much more are available to everybody who supports my channel over on the coolest place on the entire interweb, why it's patreon.com slash benellerguitars. This week, all of my lovely and loyal Patreon supporters will get downloadable tabs of this lesson as well as some super fun practice tracks that I made to help you get these licks up to speed. Gear-wise, I'm rocking my Sir Modern Satin right here, and I'm plugging this into an Exonic SP compressor into the front of my Axe FX3 that I've got right here. I really enjoy using a compressor whenever I'm doing a lot of legato based stuff. It just tends to kind of even out the volume and tone of all those notes that are going by. For sweet deals on exotic gear as well as all the other cool stuff that I use, be sure to click the Sweetwater affiliate link in the video description below and treat yourself to something nice. I like things that are nice. So this lick is based on really fast sex tuplets, which means that we're cramming six notes into every single beat that goes by, like this. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Kind of like the Adams Family rap that MC Hammer did. That's current and relevant, right? You could also get this rhythm going by simply saying the word triple it twice over every beat. Triple it, 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 triple it. Adams Family. You know how it goes. So this is based off of the A minor scale, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, and we're gonna start off here on the A note on the low E string, so fret number five is where we begin. We're gonna pick that A note and then hammer on the B and hammer on the C note. After this, we're gonna to go to the next string, the A string here, and play the same pattern. It's gonna give us D, E, F. So, that's our first sextuplet. Triple it, triple it. After this, we're gonna play a single note on the next string, the D string here. This is gonna be the G note, which we can find on fret number five, okay? After you hit that single note, what we're gonna do is to go back to the A string, and we're gonna play F, E, D, so that was just some pull-offs, and then hammer back up, E, F. So it's like this. So you got your first 12 notes of the pattern down. Now we're gonna play the next sequence, which sounds like this. Now that was the exact same phrasing concept, just beginning from a different part of the scale pattern. So check this out. We're gonna begin here on the A string, fret number five, the D note. And then you're gonna hammer on the E and F. Then you're gonna to go to the D string here and play G, A, B. Notice the extra stretch right there. I like to use fingers one, two, four, whenever I'm doing those whole step, whole step stretches. If you're Paul Gilbert, your mileage may vary, but I always like to use one, two, four for those. So there's six notes. Next, what you're gonna do is grab a single note on the G string here, fret number five, the C note. Then just like what we did before, we're gonna go back a string here and play it down, then up it, like this. Okay, so the second sequence is. So now we should have something like this. 
Now at this point what we're going to do is to move the exact same pattern up one octave. This is kind of a Paul Gilbert-ism. He does this all the time where he'll shred through a lick and then just jump up an octave rather than continuing straight through the scale pattern. So the second section of the lick here is going to begin on the D string fret number 7 on the A note. Again, same phrasing and everything as before, same notes as before, just one octave higher. So we're going to play A, hammer on B, hammer on C, then go to the next string here and play D, hammer on E, hammer on F. It feels just like what we did, it's just one octave higher. So there's your first sextuplet. Now this time to grab that single G note, now it's going to be under your middle finger on the B string fret number 8. Again, the B string always kind of changes our scale patterns and stuff. Sort of a pain, but you can learn to live with it. So grab that note, and then what we're going to do is to go down and back up the G string like this. F, E, D, E, F. Okay? So the second octave will sound like this. After this, you're going to begin the same idea from where you are. So the D note on the G string, fret number 7. Now we're going to go to the B here to play G, A, B. So notice that once again went to that 1, 2, 4 sort of wide stretch. Grab the C note on the high E string, then you're going to play down, then back up the notes on the B string that you just did. And then just to resolve, I landed back here on A for the kind of A minor tonality we're playing over. I guess you could also go up to C if you wanted to, but roots are always really nice and easy to hear. So our ascending A minor pattern should sound something like this. So now that you're a hammer-on hero with the ascending version of the lick, let's make you a pull-off pro and talk about how to descend using this pattern. It's the exact same phrasing concepts and rhythmic ideas and everything. We're just going to be walking down the scale and using a slightly different pattern. Here's how it sounds. Now that right there is a tasty lick you can really sink your chompers into. It's going to start off here with some guitar yoga, doing some of those big old stretches, starting off here on the 12th fret high E, which is the note E. That's the fifth of our A minor there, so it's a good strong chord tone to start off on. Now you're going to pick that E note and then pull off to the D and C notes on that same string. Go to the B string and play the exact same pattern. It's going to give us the notes B, A, and G. Again, there's that first sextuplet. We're going to grab a single F note here on the G string. You can get that on the 10th fret. And then on the B, we're going to go back to that sequence of notes that we had and play up and down them. Okay? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. After this, we're going to play the exact same idea, but starting off from the B string on fret number 12, from the B note. So we're going to walk down those three notes then have a little bit of position shift here whenever we go to the G string on its F note. So notice I went from my little finger here on 12, then my little finger here on 10 to start the G string off on the F note. Walk down, F, E, D. And then we're going to grab a single C note here on the D string before we go back to the G and walk up and down. So for the first half of the lick, we should have something like this. And then just like what we did with the ascending version, we're going to shift everything down an octave. So right now you just ended this lick with the uh, D note held down with your first finger on the G string, right? Well, what we need to do is start off on another E note, the same way we began the lick off. So use your little finger again and play the 9 on the G string. That way we can get this sequence. So you can see I did 9, 7, and 5 on the G and D strings. Same thing as this, just an octave lower single note on the A string here is going to be the F note. Walk back up and down the D. And then start the same idea off again from the D string on fret number 9. We're going to walk down that. Walk down F, E, D on the A string. Single C note here on the low E. And then we're going to go back here to the A string and walk up and down its notes. Okay, so that's... And lastly, I ended back on the E note for a good strong resolution against an A minor sound. So the descending lick is going to sound like this. Here comes the shift. Yeah. 
Now here's some tips for you guys to hopefully get you some more success whenever you're using your hammer-ons and pull-offs like this. So you might have noticed there when I was doing the descending lick, I used fingers three, two, one a little bit right there, right? That's totally an option. You can even do that whenever you're playing the ascending version of the lick like this. A lot of players would even prefer that because then your middle finger is in the same spot all the time. And whenever you shift from this shape to this shape, you're really just going from finishing with your third finger to finishing with your fourth finger like that. So if you're more comfortable using that kind of like slanted finger one, two, three approach, I say go for it. I'm not about to call the pinky police on you or Guthrie Govan. Guthrie Govan, probably like the greatest guitar player that's ever lived, he plays patterns like that with one, two, three all the time. So if it works, totally go for it. Now, the really tricky thing here is keeping this nice and rhythmic. You know, this is all very specifically phrased together as those 16th note triplets or sextuplets. So this needs to be a good, punchy, groovy kind of lick. And it's really easy whenever you're playing legato stuff to let your hammer-ons or your pull-offs get away from you and end up with a big arrhythmic mess like this. <laughs> Now don't get me wrong, I love the sound of those super flowy, non-rhythmic legato lines that players like Joe Satriani use all the time. I think those are super cool. But I think if you're trying to get the most control out of your hammer-ons and pull-offs, you need to practice it with a dedicated rhythmic value. You know what I mean? Get it really super punchy. If you want to learn more about that stuff, watch everything Tom Quayle has to say. Tom Quayle is seriously the legato legend. So go over to his channel, tell him I said hi, buy all of his guitar courses and stuff. You'll learn a lot about how to keep your uh, legato stuff nice and rhythmic because he is the master of it. So if you're wanting to get these techniques really down, you should learn how to keep them in time, okay? So as you practice this stuff, I want you to really concentrate on following that super even triplet rhythm. And of course, you should do that by practicing along with your metronome. I have the little Korg Blue Demon right here. And you can set this thing up to where it will subdivide every beat as triplets, which is fine. I oftentimes find that whenever you're practicing legato stuff really rhythmically like this, it's actually way harder to keep it in time the slower you go. Like I can play that lick way easier fast than I can slow because it's so hard to keep it in time when you're really playing that waiting game with every finger instead of just mashing them down as fast as you can. So set your metronome here to a pretty reasonable tempo. Let's find one here. So let's say like 80 BPM or so, right? It's not super slow, but it's not all that fast. And set your metronome to subdivide that into triplets, okay? So this is triplets at 80 BPM. Triplet, 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 triplet. Set that thing up and try to play right on top of it. There you go guys, a super slick, liquidy legato phrasing idea to add into your playing today. This is also a really excellent one to use to practice your alternate picking with. It's really hard because there's so many like string crosses and odd number of notes per string and stuff, but it is really killer to work out with the picking stuff, so give that a try too. Thanks as always for watching. Be sure to like this video and subscribe for new content coming at you every single week and ring the bell for notifications. I've actually gotten messages and comments from a lot of people saying that my videos haven't been showing up in the feed and that they had rung the bell but the bell got unrung so go ahead and give that thing a check make sure that you still get notifications every time i put up a new video for you guys if you like this video and want access to those downloadable tabs and the practice tracks that you can use to get this thing up to smoking fast speed be sure to check out that patreon page today by clicking the patreon link in the video description below. And don't forget, I'll also have free tabs up on my Instagram page, which you can find at Ben Eller Guitars, and you can find the tabs by using this hashtag, the one that's on screen right now. Just search for that, it'll take you right to it, even if you're watching this 10 years in the future or something like that. Be sure to keep your eyes peeled on my channel here. I'll be releasing a new song this Monday that I'm really excited about using my Skirvison Raptor 8 string as well as an incredible new amp from the fine folks at Rev. So be sure to stay tuned for that thing. I'm really excited about it. The tunes turned out awesome, mixed and mastered by my good buddy, Eric Hill at Blue Room Recording Studios. As always, excited to share with you guys. Be sure to check that out this Monday. Well guys, it's been fun as always, but it's time for me to depart and for you to get away from the computer, grab your guitar, and get to work. Less clicking, more picking.